Welcome into the latest <laughs> edition of Extra Time. I'm Gavin. going on strike. Gavin Frank, we've that's, got that, Craig I must admit, just before we came on here, that's how I opened up. I was thinking about industrial action. <laughs> <laughs> I had, a pla I had a big black. He, he, he did come in a little bit chippy. He did, didn't he? He went, I'm going on strike. I'm not doing the show. Of course he was going to do the show. Loves it. And then we warmed him up. See, hold on a minute. That was a price. Now that you've, you've, you've... We have people that are very important that maybe be watching this show. And you've painted me... Not that I've already not painted myself. Do you know what he is? <laughs> do you know what he is, right? I'm not doing the show, I'm not doing the show. All he wants is a bit of love. Yeah, mate. And then, oh, of course, do he's the doing show. the show. Please, Craig. Please, Craig, we need you, Craig. You're the <laughs> best. Nothing without you. you. You're the best. <laughs> You're not always winding you up. Although I has, I've been close to walking out before after, but I wasn't close to walking out today. I just was very relaxed coming in. I don't know why today. All right, let me start with the first question, and I'll ask you, Frank. For Top Craig, five for goals. Craig What's Frank. That all about? Oh, no, we haven't got Frank right now, but we, we've got Gab. But I'll ask you guys, because it's about scoring a goal. So, uh, Craig, have you ever scored as perfect or terrible of an own goal as Verba did in the first half today? Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. And I scored it at Don's old club. Which one? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I scored it. I scored... <laughs> Seriously, which one? Chevy United. Sunderland, West Ham, Millwall, Coventry, <laughs> Liverpool, Liverpool, Evan, uh, Hartlepool. <laughs> oh, that's where you started. I know that. Uh, was it Anfield? I scored two that day. One for us, Chelsea, and one for Liverpool. And I scored it at the cop end. I was sandwiched in between. I think it was Robbie Fowler and John Barnes at the back post, and I tried to nod it out. The ball came at the back post. Stevie Clark, Clark, and I tried to nod it out for <coughs> for a corner, and I got a bit too much purchase on it. And I headed it right into the corner at the cop end. But the cop were all cheering for you. Well, they were there, yeah, <laughs> clapping. I've done the same. I've done the same. I had tonsillitis going into the last game of the season. I was at Sunderland at the time, and I was playing against my former club, Everton at Goodison. Hold on, what's the, what's the tonsillitis got to do with this? Well, if you let me get there, I'll tell you. Okay. So I was really <laughs> unwell. I do apologise. Really, apologize. really unwell. And I didn't want to travel with the team because I'd lost loads of weight and I was just completely unfit. But we were going to Magaluf straight after the last day of the season. And Peter Reid said, if you do not travel to Everton, you're not coming to Magaluf. So I packed my bags, I got a car, got to the stadium, scored an own goal, got sent off and got stand and ovation from the Everton fans. And still went to Magaluf. <laughs> Magaluf, a very popular haunt back in the day. In There's no way there. I was missing that trip. No, uh, we do have Frank back. Frank, did you ever score a great own goal? A great one, I don't know. It was a cross, and um, I felt that I had to get the ball, otherwise the, the guy behind me, the striker, would have, would have scored. So I desperately tried to put the ball away, but I, yeah, it was a great tackle uh, on, onto my goal. So uh, I don't know if it was perfect, but uh, it was uh, desperate. <laughs> Frank. One of the best on goals I ever scored, apart from the one, at, the one at Anfield was in front of a big crowd. This one was comical. I'm playing in the reserves, for Chelsea. And I'm not playing the reserves because I'm in the reserves. I'm playing in the reserves because Glenn Hoddle said to me, I'm going to play you sweeper at the weekend. And I'm like, I can have a bit of that. Yeah. Not so much running around as the middle of the back, just at the back, sweep up, happy days, big cigar. He says, so I'm going to, I want you to play 45 minutes in the reserves on Tuesday and play sweeper just to get you in the mold for it. And I went, sounds good. Day off Wednesday, yeah. 20 minutes, ball gets played down the channel. I'm there, covering, straight across. This is going to be a cakewalk. Blindly passes it back to Kevin Hitchcock, my mate, who wasn't in the goal. Right. <laughs> He'd come out to make an angle for me. <laughs> and I, the ball rolled straight into the goal. At which point, uh, Glenn decided that I wasn't going to be playing sweeper on the Saturday Amazing. in the first team. Yeah, good job he tested you out there. Uh, oh, wait. Frank, what are your predictions for Denmark in Euro 2024 and Canada in Copa America 2024? Do you think they'll go all the way in their respective tournaments, just like you predicted for the World Cup? Of course, of course, they're my favourites, you know, <laughs> desperately. No, no, no. Um, well, I said, I don't expect anything from those two. They, 
they left me out, you know, they, they, they put me down and I, I, I feel so lonely since I saw them being so poor during the World Cup. So good luck to them. I'm, I'm very fond of Denmark. It's a beautiful country that I really uh, love. And I, I really appreciated going to Canada. And I really thought that uh, they, were, they would do something good. They did bad. Maybe I put the curse on them. So, uh, well, you know, I'm a bit disappointed and I'm still not ready to forgive. Uh, what they, they've done to me. Great country, Denmark. Beer's too expensive. Oh, it's... I like that country, so I hope that they go far in the Euros. Like... <laughs> Frank, surely one, of the, surely one of the producers has asked you to do a, a bracket for this tournament. Frank's brackets are marvellous. Yeah. Oh, it's marvellous. Yeah. You, should, you should have seen well, Frank's... I put. I, put... I did. No, I didn't do the bracket yet. I can do the bracket oh, if you want, you yeah. know, and I can put Romania I can put Romania I can put Romania favourite if you want to. You, you missed Frank's you missed you the World Cup. You, you might have missed this. No, I think I've seen it. No no Frank's no the World Cup was before. Yeah, we got Canada. Yeah, yeah. No, Frank's team of the year. Oh no. You missed that. Yeah. That was brilliant. <laughs> it wasn't bad. Was it? Yeah. You can check it out over on YouTube. It was uh, something else. Gab, has the window officially shut on Belgium being an international powerhouse? Well, okay. So look, when you say powerhouse, I'm talking about somebody who's consistently good and consistently gets good results over time. Belgium are third in the world. And I know we joke about the FIFA rankings, but it's math. Whether we like it or not, they are a powerhouse. Well, if you're asking whether the window is shut, on Belgium winning a major trophy, yeah, it keeps getting smaller and smaller because um, like we said, uh, Hazard's now gone. Not that you probably want the you know, late model uh, Hazard. You've got Carrasco having to having to start in games like these who, with all his uh, defensive deficiencies, uh, not to mention his age. You've got a team that has superstars, some older, some younger coming through. Uh, yeah, in a tournament, they can pull it off. Anything can happen. Greece won the Euros in 2004, right? Some of us remember that. But uh, certainly, they're not among the, the four or five top favourites. Don, what is the percentage chance Belgium don't make it past the round of 16? Well, who's in their group again? Who's in their group again? I've seen a million games. Who, sorry? Belgium. <laughs> uh, well, Slovakia. We'll get past them. Well, they got beat off in the day. Uh... Who's in Belgium's <laughs> group, you asked me? You just asked me who's in the group. I know. It says Slovakia. Oh, that's Romania and Ukraine. Romania and yeah. Ukraine, yeah. Oh, they've still got a sniff. Yeah. What's the yeah, percentage chance if you were in Germany on a remote camera that you would have done extra time? 99%. OK. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 100%. Professional. Exactly. I'm the opposite. Uh, I'm in Germany now where Gab is. That, that line has been well and truly kicked to pieces. <laughs> Pulled. It's Frank's, like, it's it's Frank's line we're struggling the, 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 tripod, the tripod that's housing the camera has been launched off the edge of a cliff. The phone is switched off. There is no... There's nothing. There's nothing can, nothing on the planet. It would be. It would be a call from Stevie that you shouldn't Please, have picked Craig. up what you did. Please, Craig. Right. Please do the show. Craig always picks up the phone to Stevie when he shouldn't. Who? You. No, I don't. I, I, you would. If Stevie called, you'd pick up no. and you'd get your What's Gab saying? What are you saying, Gab? I've learned to not answer that the phone to him. Well, it, it, to be fair, um, I'm joined. Producer Freddie and the company have made it very easy for me because I'm actually on the balcony uh, of the apartment where I'm staying. So my bed is literally six steps that way. So when. Y'all finally release me when we move on from these <laughs> stories of all the own goals you scored and, and whatever and Kevin Hitchcock, then I'll be in bed within 30 seconds. So <laughs> that changes the equation a little bit. If, if they've been like, it. oh, yes, you go down by the Brandenburg Gate and stay there in the middle of the night and then, you know, uh, try to get a cab at 2 o'clock in the morning with, with, with all the, the, the drunk fans and you can go home, uh, then that might have been a little bit different. But here, hey, they made it really, really easy for me. Yeah, no, but I wasn't. You was a. You said it was B. When you said B, bed, I'm like, I was thinking another B. Bar. Come on, right. enjoy yourself, guys. <laughs> well, the kind that's very expensive in Denmark. Yeah. See, uh, that's the trouble these days. I, I have a fully stocked fridge. 
Even the journalists have turned into the modern day. They're going home early. They're, 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 <laughs> Gab's probably got a sports scientist there who's, who's testing his blood Asus. levels to see if he can do the show tomorrow or write a piece for the website. He's in the red zone. And he can't do it. He can't go for a bevy because he's he's lactic acid zone. is too much. And we just... But I just go to the pub. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, I know I've been very unprofessional, but why change now? No, well, maybe that's why you're sat in the studio and you're not in a nice balcony in Germany right now. No, I'm sat in the studio because I don't want to be in a balcony <laughs> in Germany. Uh, Frank, are you surprised Sham started Saliba? It seems obvious to everyone except him, but it seems like he came to his senses. Uh, I was pleased that he, uh, that he chose Saliba. Um, and uh, I think it was the obvious choice and, uh, and the natural one. Um, um, Upa I was surprised that Upamecano played. Uh, I don't know what happened to Konate, but I think Upamecano didn't have a very good season. We saw that with Bundesliga. And it was for me natural that Deschamps, you know, realized that uh, Saliba had to play. I wasn't convinced, I have to say, by his performance today. I think he can do much better. But I always say that uh, that's the difference between a club and a national team, and you have to uh, level, level up your, your performances. But uh, it's a natural choice, and it's a good choice from Didier Deschamps. Um, like he chose Kante, he, he had the right to choose uh, Saliba. Saliba is a great defender. How so important... Now that we're out and everybody today, now that, now that we're just laying the cards on the table, no, no holes barred, nothing. I think we should out Don today. Oh, nice. Done? Well, <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to get everyone finished, don't he? What are you going to say? He, uh, he doesn't want to go home by the time. Bear you've told every boss that's in this company I didn't want to do this show today. <laughs> what are you out in me for? You didn't say that, you said that. We yeah. said you're a little bit chiffy when no, you came in. I come in a miserable, people complain. I come in a bit chipper, people complain. I can't win. Uh, however, I am not stalking golfers at my hotel. <laughs> Well, don't right. be giving locations. I am of not going away. So, what Craig's trying to say. I'm is, not stalking should, golfers. You may, Can I mention you may, names? Maybe you shouldn't. Oh, okay, there's a couple of golfers in my hotel. Okay. And I'm on a golfing group, and I took a sneaky little picture and sent it to my golfing group. Look who's in the hotel. Yeah. The, Which is nothing wrong with that, by the I'm way. I'm not going to make the golfers who are in the top 10 in the world, by the way, and who have just played at the US Open. And the stalker. Christ, you're narrowing it down, Craig. Yeah, be yeah. careful. <laughs> stalker, I've said could be anyone. He's gone top 10. The stalker is taking pictures of them. In the in the uh, the restaurant. What's wrong with that? You'll be, you'd you'd have be at breakfast with them tomorrow. I'll tell you what, if, if, <laughs> I'm going to get, get a one-on-one. Get one no, on. If one of those golfers had turned around and caught you... And then there was another one in the gym. It was very nice, by yeah. the way. And then what happened oh. in the gym? You were about to get off the machine you were on, but you yeah, tried to impress I, them, I, didn't I, you? My, my routine on the treadmill is uh, 10, 30-second sprints. So I do like a warm-up, bit of a 15-minute jog. 30 seconds as fast as you can, 30 Mind seconds off. I was 10 in, and the golfer come in with his, uh, with his mate, personal trainer, whatever, and I thought, I can't get off now. I've got to do another 10. The 10 will doing 20. <laughs> Wait, you just... Just in case you thought, like, who's he? Like, I've just opened the door and he's going to disappear. Just be you. No, I did. I've done 20. Be yourself, Tom. Took a picture. All right, uh, we're going to let Gab take those six steps to his bed. Go to bed, Gab. We're, uh, we're going to say goodbye to Frank <clears throat> LaBeouf. Uh, Congratulations, Frank, on what, the win for France. What, are they, oh, on, gonna... are they on a half day today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to wrap I up the show up. here. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. We'll be back tomorrow to do it all over again.